Williamson, Johnson, Perego, Friesen, and Shepard. Five of the best cars in the business. 29 laps remain to the march for the $100,000 paycheck. One hundred years has produced many memories and iconic moments for Orange County Fair Speedway. From the inaugural race in 1919 to annual Eastern States competitions to now, 100 years commemorated with an event-filled weekend, marking yet another monumental moment in Speedway history. Kicking off the centennial celebration, Speedway hosted an evening with Tim McGraw who performed in front of thousands of locals and race fans, bringing back big name concerts to the venue for the first time in nearly two decades. The following day, racing festivities were underway and fans were treated with a chance to meet some legendary drivers. What do you want to sign here? Uh, yeah, anywhere you want, brother. Classic cars and the men who built them were part of the interactive fan experience. We didn't even know what aerodynamics was. I mean, we had the bodies on, we had these skinny wings, and yeah, maybe they had a little bit of angle to them, but I think my brother was the first generic body to go across the line. Evolving times and advances in technology have changed racing, but a fast car is only as good as the person behind the wheel. And with the Super Dirt Series in town that night, fans were treated to some of the best wheelmen. The pits were packed and competition drew top drivers from around the country and Canada, eager to test the new surface. Leading the field from his third place starting spot, Matt Shepard picked up his second win at Orange County Fair Speedway with a dominant performance. Some of the first out-of-town drivers were back on the scene in Middletown and reconnecting with fans from then and now. Reminiscing and sharing stories from the good old days, Big Florida 3 offered opinions on everything from racing to life. That's for when they didn't have no lights down the back straightaways. If you were off the back straight, that's why they threw all the beer cans and stuff down there on the back straightaways, and you was in the beer cans flying all over the place. <laughs> Being the best is never a cut and dry answer. With so much to factor in, and the greatest of all time title at stake, the Orange County faithful voted their number one. Orange County Fair Speedway, greatest driver of all times as voted on by the fans. Come on, Brett Hearn! Yeah. Brett Hearn! Wow, I'll tell you what. Well, one of the things, I, when I was in the hospital in intensive care, one of the people who stopped by to see me was Brett Hearn. Uh, and, uh, I'll always, always remember that. But uh, I think if the whole world was racing people, we wouldn't have any troubles in the world. Because, uh, <laughs> Brett the Jet headed straight to the pits to prep for what he does best. Lighting up the action, Anthony Perego, Billy Dunn, and Stuart Friesen took turns leading the 80 lap Friday night feature. But building on his recent track record, Super Matt Shepard found his way to the front and never let up. Here he comes, winning the second night of competition, Super Matt Shepard! With the turn of a new day came the turn of a century, celebrating the long-awaited centennial $100,000 race. With the excitement of the 160-lap race looming, the festivities were underway, fixing in fan favorites in the special NASCAR exhibition race featuring Stuart Friesen and Sheldon Creed. 
Special guest, former NASCAR driver Michael Waltrip, joined Tim Pitts in the booth to get the night started. Do I hear those trucks fired up down there? That sounds like it. What a fun trip this has been for me, and what a fun trip it is. Oh, oh. Great. oh great. Hey, my favorite movie, Over the Hedge. Walk it off, walk it off. That's what he's doing right now. The Legendary Three, Will Kegel, Buzzy Rudiman, and Gary Ballou pace the field, setting the tone for the sport's most anticipated evening of racing. The important thing about the beginning of that race yesterday was that we finally had the, the combination of well, the tires right and the track correct so that you could run from top to bottom. Uh, incredibly fun and uh, it produced some great racing early. It was as crazy as you'd ever won a $100,000 to win race. The biggest race in the 100 year history here in Middletown, New York is about to drive off of Pit Road. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Here they come on a turn number four. Williamson will lead the first lap and the cement down the back straightaway. Williamson takes the Barrett's number three car to the outside of the speedway. You know, of course, uh, we knew uh, when we took the green flag that we, we were under a threat of at least some light rain ended up being a little bit more than that. Billy Dunn in spot number 11, Anthony Borrego, spot number 12, Chris Hoyle was 13th, Matt Shepard, we got trouble, trouble, trouble in turn number one. Many, many, many cars involved in a major mishap in turn number one. Comes I didn't even know it was raining. When we came around after the wreck, the yellow goes out, the yellow comes out on the back straightaway. When we come around um, the next lap, the track is soaked. So it happened that fast. Months and months of work, thousands of hours of planning, so much money went into this event. There is still one thing that nobody has control over, and that is what we're experiencing right now as the moisture falls here tonight. Due to the rain, these cars can be taken back behind pit wall that are involved in the crash. They will not be penalized to the rear of the field for working on their cars. You got a smaller gun? Give me a smaller gun. The dirt rule states that you can work on your car under the red. We have to take it off. Yeah, but it's five buttons. We're gonna have another out two hours. Fix it up. Fix it up the best we can. It really sucks, man. They're trying to fix them, trying to get them back out there. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be interesting. The unique thing about this race is that there's a bit of a fuel mileage issue. You don't want to have uh, guys that are actually making repairs to their car or that are able to make repairs. You don't want those guys to have an advantage by fueling their car while the guys that weren't in an accident on pit road can't fuel their car. So all those things have to be factored in and they've got to be factored in pretty quickly. With tensions high and the biggest race ever on the line, confusion and chaos flooded pit road. You announced a over the loudspeaker that if you were in a wreck, you could go behind the wall and fix your car without penalty. So that's what I did. Before we go on the track, you got to let us air pressure. You do air pressure at the minimum. Right, we're sitting on pit road for a couple hours. It's going to be two or three hours. Right. Uh, right now, we're <laughs> contemplating on where we're going to start the race, because some guys got crashed in the wreck. You know, from here, they're just trying to decide what's going to be the best way to go. If they can let guys go to back and cars, if we're going to be allowed to fuel them, if we're going to be allowed to change tires, it'll be a little bit of a process. We just had to do what we had to do in order to make it absolutely fair for everybody. I think sometimes in circumstances like that, you've got to make a decision and live with it. The decision was made that if you do work on your car, you're welcome back out to the speedway, but you must start behind any car that did not go behind pit wall to work on your car. Things were happening fast, so they either had to say, well, you can work on your car, you can't work on your car, but to make an announcement like that prematurely really throws things off. I don't know how you can change the rule an hour after you told everybody that they could come in and fix their car without penalty. Uh, we might have tried to wait until they went green again to fix the car so we wouldn't get penalized, but I don't know, they just make the rules up as they go, I guess. I feel terrible for the, the people that, that got the short end of the stick on that, but you know, racing is 
a lot of talent and a lot of luck. And uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody understands that. As the clouds settled and the storm blew over, clear skies gave way to Middletown's best night of racing. Quickly, the track has dried off beautifully, and they are back to racing speeds. Matt Williamson is your leader, Billy Decker is second. D.D. Johnson, right the number three spot, Hearn fourth, Guler fifth. Stewart frees it, now the inside spot number six, and then Hearn's got a good run on the doctor. Well, I mean, after all that stuff, I mean, I thought it was the most incredible race we've ever seen at Middletown. Without a doubt, raciest track, craziest race, back and forth, lap cars in between, outside, inside. Williamson gonna have his lose right there in the battle for spot number one, and Stuart Friesen has made the move to the outside of the speedway. Friesen slipped up a bit. Dini Johnson shot down to the inside. Now Johnson and Friesen side by side down the back stretch. From the back, a few drivers fought through the field. Shepard. Here comes Super Matt Shepard. Beep, beep, bye bye. And now Matt Shepard in spot number five. Higby. 11th is Jerry Higby. Higby rise the number 11 spot. Crumble. Here comes Crumble. Spade K. Spade to the inside. Durango. And Anthony Durango is a new race leader. Durango with a damaged race car from the rain delay accident. A blast. Now to spot number one. That was an all baby, baby move if we ever saw one. As the race winded down, flat position intensified and Williamson regained his leading spot. So something gone awry on Brent Hearn's car. A $100,000 flush right now for the most winningest driver in the history of the Orange County Fair Speedway. Matt Williamson down the back straightaway. We are coming up on two laps to go. Two to go this time. Wow, he hits the wall. Freezes in the wall. That's going to be out for him. Freezer was able to come back off the concrete and drive away and still be in number two spot. And he goes oh, the and he goes the With $100,000 around the corner, the green is up for grabs and anything can happen. Oh, baby, baby, the march to the biggest paycheck in the history of the Orange County Speedway. Here they come on a turn number four. Shepard, right there in the number nine car, spot number three. Ladies and gentlemen, for $100,000, make that check payable to Matt Williamson. He just ran a steady race. I mean, he didn't panic when he got passed. Uh, you know, he got passed by uh, Stewart once. He got passed by Frago. Um, it wasn't a gimme, that's for sure. And so it's kind of cool to see him, you know, hang on and get the win at the end. We just won, Dad. We just won the thing. Oh, my God. I wish you were here. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened in my life. And this is the biggest race in history, and it'll go down as one of the biggest races in history. This is pretty cool. Fantastic isn't a word for it. I talked to the other day and I predicted that we'd win a race. There has never been a race that I wanted to win more than this race. From the hard play to the grandstands to the 31st lap, countless drivers, speedway workers, families and fans have created memories that last a lifetime. As we preserve the history and celebrate the future, Racing at Orange County Speedway is here to stay and has never been better. The names etched in the history books. The races painted in the minds of fans. And a legacy boasting 100 years.